Hi, this is Paula from CHNE. Tourism is one of the economic drivers in the region. In a regular year, about 130 people work at hotels and accommodations in Shetty Camp. That's about 2.5% of the population. Of course, every other local business benefits from the flow of tourists, but this year is going to be different. We caught up with a motel owner to see how he's preparing for this season. Greg LaRocque, owner of the Cornerstone Motel and organizer of the Shetty Camp Area Register Lodging Association, says that the industry may be affected for years to come. Here's our conversation. The Cornerstone Motel, we purchased it in uh, 2014. And uh, it was the middle of the summer of 2014. And over the past five, five to six years, we've been renovating and fixing and making it uh, a much, much nicer place than it was. And about how many visitors do you have each season? Uh, each season, we have uh, a fairly high, now it's been growing since we've taken over. Um, the last uh, three seasons, I would say, we have about uh, around 20, uh, 2,100 rooms sold uh, per year, which gives us about a rough uh, approximate 80 to uh, 90% occupancy. Are you open all year round? No, we're only open from May 1st till October. Typically at the end of um, uh, Celtic Colors, we tend to close because at this end of uh, the Cabot Trail, most of the Celtic Colors folks, when they leave, almost seems like a closing of the uh, season and there aren't any uh, visitors that we can house. Speaking about Celtic Colors, this year they're going digital. How is it going to affect your business? Well, Celtic Colors going digital most certainly is going to be a challenge for us. I don't expect that we're going to see any um, likelihood of extra traffic. As a matter of fact, we'll lose most of our end of season. We usually do a very good brisk end of season. And um, much thanks to the Celtic Colors. Unfortunately, uh, Cape Breton's colors last longer than the Celtic Colors do. And... Uh, it falls off early, but this year we don't expect uh, to see October as a, a month that we could probably go to the bank with. It's one of the few months that we do uh, really get good participation, uh, but I do see that falling off significantly this year. And our question is whether or not we'll even be open in that time frame, although the trees still draw people. How are you preparing for this season? For this season, we're doing an awful lot of changes. We've got to really prepare for um, a couple of things. One of which is the big question, do we even open? Because at this point, our cancellations by far outweigh our reservations. So we have had a really good spring uh, way early on before COVID. Uh, through from December of last year, we were getting reservations. We were getting nicely filled up, one of our better years. And um, as quickly as COVID came out, uh, people were dropping off like leaves off a tree. Uh, it was quite uh, upsetting to see, but there, I fully appreciate and understand where people are coming from. Uh, their safety, their health comes first but it most certainly affected our reservations to a large degree. Uh, all of our May reservations all by themselves dropped off. We had actually decided May would be a closed month, uh, but they all dropped off anyway. Um, June has completely cleared out. And as far as July goes, we're on our way with July clearing out as well. So uh, July and August are very significant months in a seasonal business. Um, and at this point, uh, there is an extremely low call for rooms in that time frame. And anything we have is basically falling off the map. Um, reservations are very low. As a matter of fact, almost nil. Uh, there's nobody planning. There have been some planning for October. But now that Kelty Colors has dropped off, we're seeing some of those drop off as well. So. I think it's going to be a very weak year and um, so much so that it makes a difference whether you open or whether you close. If you stay closed, 
you know what your costs will be. They're set costs, basically. I mean, there's obviously some maintenance costs that you may not uh, plan, but most of that is a cost you can bear if you plan to it. If you open, costs go up incrementally. And so those are uncontrollable costs. Those costs are the costs that will hurt the business tremendously because you don't know where it'll take you on a debt load. And so your debt load becomes much greater and suddenly you may get more debt load than you ever planned on because nobody shows up. And you can't control who's gonna show up and who's not. The government has made it clear that the, um, the stay home, stay safe has been the motto for the last two months. And that motto has been drilled into our heads. And I think you're gonna find that a lot of vacationers are going to be taking the stay home approach and or the staycation as they call it. That most certainly is gonna be the event of the year. I think it's gonna be very localized. We may see travelers from Nova Scotia, across Nova Scotia, but based on what our reservations are showing, um, you know, we've dropped off pretty much all our international travel at this point because of the expected uh, border uh, restrictions. Most of those are dropping off like flies. So it's very difficult to see if, uh, you know, there's any possibility to open and salvage any of the year because once some of those costs open, they open up and they're big. So television costs, so satellite is a very expensive portion of it. Um, you also turn on your electric, so you have to have heat, air conditioning, lights, um, things that cost money on a constant basis. And once you do it, you can't partly open. You really have to open up completely. So it's, um, it's a big question that a lot of hotelers, motelers have right now is do I even open this year? Because it may lead to something I may not be able to afford and it may close me down permanently. Have you been able to access any government help? Yes, uh, we've been fortunate. We have met most of the criteria. So we have had some. Um, by no stretch of the imagination does it in any way, shape or form eliminate the debt that we will go into because of COVID. Um, the, uh, the, the government incentives have allowed, uh, I would call it a medium-sized, small to medium-sized businesses to be able to pick up some funds. So that helped out immensely. Um, the also wages, uh, the, uh, the wage parity or the wage subsidy is most certainly uh, a great advantage to have, but without employees, you can't use it. <laughs> so you need to have your employees, yes, you can have them not work and have them paid through the wage subsidy, but that being done, um, I mean, it's, it's difficult to do. Uh, you can, uh, you know, you can hire them on and put them on that, but then they lose out on their EI. The biggest problem that we are going to run into, I think it's going to be our staff and their ability to receive EI again. Right now, the government has not put together a formula for tourism, but they most certainly have done that for the fishing industry. I believe that they need to follow along with the fishing industry and make sure that the same principles that were uh, listed for the fishing industries in order to get their wages through the winter needs to be a part of the government's actions at this point due to the fact that many of our people here are uh, in great need of that and cannot survive ultimately throughout the winter without that. So we need some action happening there from the government. And that would be the biggest uh, piece of legislation that they could do to help out this area because of its nature. How many employees do you usually get in a normal year? In a normal year, we have five employees. Um, we were going to have six this year. That was the intention to bring on another person 
but unfortunately, um, uh, the sixth is definitely out of the question now. And on top of that, the um, the employees that we do have, we have one that is back on uh, payroll at this point, uh, doing maintenance work. But at the other side, our housekeepers are not on the picture right now. We don't have the ability for. Uh, I mean, there's no requirement for anyone to be doing uh, housekeeping. We are doing light cleaning of the rooms so they don't get dusty and stuff, but it doesn't take a uh, housekeeping crew to do that. Any idea of how many you would get this year? This year, we would be looking at a total of three employees plus my wife and myself, who both work as well, uh, full-time on the business. As I understand, you're one of the organizers of the Sherikam Area Register Lodging Association. Can you tell me more about that? What we tried to do, which was actually coincidental, uh, was not actually related to COVID-19. Um, we were looking at building a, uh, an association of hotelers that would come together to work together as a group to improve um, uh, our visibility within the tourism industry and to work closer with our actual tie-ins and Destination Cape Breton, the tourism minister, uh, trying to bring this area better focused and bring some of the events that we have in this area to a higher level so that we can bring greater tourism. That was the intention. Uh, in order to be a part of the group, we had to put some criteria. The criteria was fairly simple, that you had registered with joint stocks so that you were an actual company and not a backyard uh, uh, business. Along with that, that you must be employing people, not your, just yourselves, but you must employ at least one employee and therefore you are actually building the economy. So based on that, we have uh, several members now, I think it's approximately 10 companies now that are built in now. Uh, we are trying now to actually navigate through COVID-19 issues and financing issues first, but our goal ultimately is to ensure that we have a louder voice and a better voice and one that speaks together for our community in the Inverness area and a Shetty camp from Marguerite's to all the way to Pleasant Bay, basically, so that we have this area covered and uh, we get some focus from our tourism uh, support groups. Have you approached uh, any officials with your demands? At this time, no. We have, uh, we have, our officials are available, but at this time we are just in the process of sorting through what the criteria, what criteria is most important to um, the members of the association so that we can identify that and then identify who it is we actually visit with and try and uh, map out where that will take us. Uh, if it's tourism issues, then we go to the tourism uh, department. If it's uh, financing from the government, then it's a government department we go to. So right now we're in the process of mapping that out, but I would expect in the next, I would say two weeks, we will be sitting down or making appointments to sit down, zooming in with uh, many of the uh, municipal leaders and or federal leaders, if need be, to be able to get some focus on the tourism industry out here and what we as hotelers see as the frontline people to be able to bring in the tourism and the economy back up and what will help us survive this so that we don't lose companies out of this as well. So you mentioned EI for employees. What other needs um, does the sector have that isn't currently being covered? At this point, uh, one of the things is the financing doesn't cover a lot of the costs that we have in the tourism industry. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, tourism has pretty much stopped to a grinding halt. There are no tourists coming anywhere. They may be able to, as a, the government, the provincial government may be able to open up uh, the, the businesses and say, you're open for business now, but that doesn't make them show up. Um, and I, it, it will hurt many other businesses, but if I say was a retailer, there will be people theoretically that will volunteer to show up at my door. 
Uh, with tourism, there's a great investment. You have to understand, too, that it, most tourists that are coming out have just been restricted on everything they've had. So they don't have money. They've reduced their income, typically. And so well, the first thing that's going to fall off your platform when your, your finances are low is going to be your vacation. Um, you're going to reduce it. It's not going to be as luxurious. It's not going to be as long. And it may not be as distant as you would like it to be. So a lot of people are really holding tight onto their budgets. And that's very understandable. So that will hurt the industry long term. The short term effects are what we see today. Um, you know, the reservation. I don't see that picking up significantly, even if they open the door to new tourism and tourism open. The park is a restriction for this area. Um, if the park is not open, the largest tourist attraction we have here is the park. And that park is what brings people to us. Um, uh, that, unfortunately, will be restricted, but open. So we'll see how that rolls out. It may be okay, but I don't see that happening. But I see uh, no sort of jump on reservations at all. Is there anything that you would like to add? I think uh, I think the largest part of this is uh, really getting prepared as well. Uh, one of the things that a lot of the members in uh, the association have difficulty with is understanding and truly defining what needs to happen should they decide to open their doors. Um, the clarity of that by the government is not high, it's not good. Um, it needs to be improved and it's supposed to be. Uh, we're still waiting to hear a bit more about what we can do. Obviously, there are things like keeping six feet apart. I mean, the general uh, rules are there. But are there any specialized rules within the hotel industry? Right now, we're considered as well an essential service. We do not have to actually stay closed. Closed is a choice by the owners. If there are no bookings, then there's no reason to open. If, uh, if you want to stay open, you may stay open. So we are, uh, we are covered kind of under the umbrella of essential services. Um, there are plenty of people that need hotels like uh, Hydro and uh, Bell Canada, people, uh, workers, uh, construction workers, that sort of thing. So there's a reason to have motels available. Um, but if you can't survive, then you close your doors and you just stay closed um, until there's demand high enough to be able to say, I should reopen my doors. Um, so uh, one of the things is preparation, getting all the pieces together. Do we need face masks? Um, what, uh, what type of sanitizers are required in a room? Um, a lot of uh, hotels, uh, larger ones, mind you, uh, a lot of them will rest the room. So they basically have somebody in and they will allow that room to rest for one day before they send anyone in the room. Some, some will even leave it for two to three days, um, it, depending on capacity and uh, depending on need. But, uh, you know, a lot of these small or smaller groups like us won't have that ability. So that being said, uh, preparation, getting uh, hand sanitizers at the door, spacing out, marking out, all the same things other companies and uh, uh, industries are looking at, uh, they have to be defined pretty well for the hotel industry. now. And also access, right? Who do you, who do you ask for all this stuff? That's right. And, uh, you know, supplies, you've heard it, supplies are in limited numbers. Uh, the government has uh, tried to supply the best they can to the government. We understand uh, the industry still needs some as well. Um, and our suppliers, and I have talked to our suppliers, are having a difficult time getting any of this in short notice. My hand sanitizers, hand sanitizers that I ordered, uh, I did get them in finally, uh, and it was about a month to be able to get hand sanitizers. So there is some, there's some gates that may come up during opening. So if you're going to open, you have to buy a lot of it to make sure you've got it. That's a huge expense for us. A lot of small companies to start throwing out large amounts of money, you know, $500 to buy all the hand sanitizer material that you may need for the year. And yet you may not even open. So ordering it now 
might be a problem. Ordering it later is a problem in itself. So we're kind of locked between the two. What do you see for next year, for the coming years? I think we'll uh, see uh, a slow rise in uh, tourism again. I think we're going to have a, a tough year next year. I don't think everybody is going to be ready to just throw in the hat and go for it. Um, I believe that next year uh, the outlook will be that we will see a slow rise, uh, probably a mediocre year next year. The following year, uh, then you'll see more. But I don't think, I think it's going to take, and this is very typical of the industry, uh, we're going to take about three to five years to come back to where we were at full house and to be a consistently full house. Not, um, you know, we may get a full house earlier, but it's likely that three to five is the full recoup period. And that would be assuming that there would be some further um, either um, controls for the virus and uh, COVID-19 would be in uh, some, some state where we can control it because not necessarily curing it is the answer. As we found out, the industry is having a tough time, maybe not to find a cure, but a good control. Uh, so I think your next few years, uh, it will be a ramping again. Uh, it will not be like next year we're going to be at 100% again. I really don't believe that will fall into play. We'll have more segments coming about the tourism sector. Stay tuned for an interview on Airbnb. You can write to us at chne.television at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.